UK demand for housing reaches fever pitch and with a draft climate change bill seeking a 60% reduction in CO2 emissions by 2050, our reliance on energy intensive and resource depleting new build programmes is becoming increasingly unworkable. The building research establishment BRE teamed up with businesses and organisations to transform a Victorian stable block into a 21st century exemplar of sustainable refurbishment. BRE's partners in the venture included environmental consultants RSK Group, PRP Architects, housing sector consultancies Waits Living Space and EC Harris and the Prince's Foundation. We have to accept the fact that these um the majority of the UK's housing stock is um, single skin brick and um, similarly we can't demolish those buildings because they're part of our heritage and in that regard um, the BRE cranked up the volume so to speak with a view to um, creating the national step change. The, the building actually lends itself to being um, an exemplar project of this nature because it's in four bays of course so each bay can represent a house um, which will be refurbished to a certain standard and the BRE aim in the longer term to set a refurbishment standard for the national agenda. The Prince of Wales is always uh, keen to be involved in projects where the Prince's Foundation principles can be applied and uh, put into practice. And what this project I think is attempting to do is, is a little bit show to average builders and even homeowners how you could actually do it yourself. So it's not sort of the necessarily the most uh, uh, you know, cutting edge high technology solutions we're looking at. It's something quite a more, more simple and basic. But this, this building probably is typical of many that you would get. It started in the 1850s, altered in the 1870s, 1890s, 1920s. So it's seen a lot of changes and obviously many houses have seen similar changes. It's also constructed in a similar way, it's solid walls, um, no cavities, very little insulation at roof level, um, solid floors, damp, fairly miserable, just very typical of a, a lot of housing. So it, it lends itself to, to the same sort of changes because you're addressing the same sort of problems. The existing building will be divided into to five parts, which will be four will be like houses on the ground floor from what would be effectively a one bedroom sized unit through to a what would be a three or four bedroom extended unit to show the different solutions you want to come to. Um, the, the plan is to have a craft and workshop at one end to, to then really take on the skills that are required for this sort of work and help people to get started in the business. Um, and then a whole suite of training rooms and meeting rooms above and then the extended area which uh, uh, I'll be kind of new build will, will be to include very much um, promoting best practice just allowing a space where people come down and look BRE already has um, over 25,000 visitors a year so it's you don't have to kind of increase that very far to get a, a, a big dissemination and combine it with a number of other projects around the country to to really take best practice as far and wide as possible. It's actually quite difficult for people and even professionals sometimes it's difficult to know where to get the best information quickly and efficiently so I think part of what we can help do by documentation and dissemination with this project is to help people to understand what the issues are but also where to go and get further information. New Build I think has got some tough challenges coming up uh, being set by various codes now which are coming out which is great and refurbishment of, of existing stock is going to be the next one that's going to be focused on anyway. Um, but it's a slightly diff diff more difficult challenge because you're stuck with what you've got. There are sometimes limitations to what you can do. It's not a blank sheet of paper like a new build will be. While energy efficiency and carbon emission targets are likely to be high profile obstacles to refurbishments of this nature, there's another issue that developers will ignore at their peril. The 1994 Habitat Regulations state that for every bat killed or unreasonably disturbed, the offender is liable for a £5,000 fine and six months in prison. Perhaps more realistic, though equally damaging, is the prospect of lengthy programme delays and the confiscation of equipment. With older buildings, such as the stable block, traditionally seen as ideal roosts by bats, the BRE turned to environmental consultant RSK Group for advice.
This is a, a classic example of BRE thinking ahead and calling in an, uh, an ecologist or an ecology company to actually do an assessment up, up front. Uh, and they called in RSK. We did uh, an ecological assessment of the place. Uh, we found bats on our first visit and then they, we were able to advise them that uh, bats as a protected species needed careful consideration in how they managed the project from then on. We need to get the message across to developers that if they bring ecologists in early uh, to carry out such assessments, which are not necessarily expensive at the time, they can save costs further down the line by, number one, uh, having been caught out by the legislation, but probably more importantly, the time delays and the project hold-ups that will ensue if they've not had that assessment done up front. I think like all aspects to do with buildings, to do with planning, whether it's heritage, conservation, whether it's the environment, if you're there at the start with the information and plan within that framework, it all becomes much more straightforward. But you do need the information up front, you need to, to take that into account. Um, and above all, talk to the right people, get the right information from the start. And don't, don't assume you can do it yourself. From May onwards through to August, September is the bat breeding season. It's at that time that uh, an ecologist can come along with uh, a bat, bat box, uh, monitoring equipment and then establish uh, what species are present and the size of that population. This is important because you can't then hand the application in for planning until you know those details because each bat species has different requirements and so you can't possibly have put the mitigation in up front without knowing those details. The way the tiles were built, designed at the time and the way they were put on the roof is ideal for bats, for particularly pipistrel species, which can crawl under very small spaces that exist between the tiles. If you took those tiles away and replaced them with a modern tile, um, they, would, they would run flush with each other in a way that would be unlikely to encourage the bats. So it's certainly a consideration that when we look at the roof uh, and how we're going to put the roof back, that we consider putting it back in a way that allows those crevices to exist. It's a, it, again, it's a low cost method um, of enhancing that po bat population. We can work with the architects up front before the construction of the project and they too are very keen um, because as the years go by they will have to work on many more projects similar to this where bats are found and they need to have methods where they can support that bat population but also achieve their goals of, of architectural design. If you, this, this is a question that relates to one building here, but if you say, well, I can apply it to 1,000, 100,000, a million other properties, then suddenly it becomes really important, even if there aren't bats or the same environmental questions in all of those, the, the same thought process needs to be there as part of it to, to increase the biodiversity. This will be one project that hopefully there'll be 10 or 12 or 15 other houses around the country which will be real commercial projects but I would hope that 10 or 15 years from now that there'll be thousands, tens of thousands of houses done to the same spec, the same standard, following the same guidance for the environment, for conservation, for the building, building materials and that tens of thousands of people are living in good housing which they might not have had otherwise. I think what's unique about this project is that it's actually taking existing buildings and trying to deal with the issues. What it does show to me is the value of considering natural products as part of the solution that you might have for building any new project today. Why not have handmade uh, tiles rather than factory made ones that, that have a little bit of uh, nuances and bumps and crannies that the, the bats can actually get into. Why make everything so slick? That, that kind of research is starting to take place now. And BRE are at the forefront of that. And being involved with people like RSK and others on the project all help to reinforce our views of the, uh, the, the, the timeless traditions that we seek to bring to new building projects and settlements in the UK.